Tommy Turbo has one of the worst qualifying records of the entire field. But he really threw down a stomper during qualifying. He's on pole for race number two at Cape Town International Circuit. We're down and away. Mifuni Sanjuro starts on the outside pole. The Japanese driver nearly equally as quick as Turbo in the number three machine. Sekuli's looking to the middle already. We're three wide into turn number one. Turbo trying to come up the track. Turbo's going to hold him off for now, it looks like, as Hamill's trying to follow him through on the inside in the number 34 lift machine. That's Sinjuro and Sekuli still side by side for second. Sekuli might just get that spot. Turbo leads him into turn number two. Doesn't have to deal with any side by side traffic through Mandela. Oh, we've already got a crash in the back. That's several cars off approaching turn two. Denzel Williams and Jerry Guerra made a little bit of contact during the close race down into Shawane. Guerra goes around. King and Williams sent way off the racetrack into the gravel trap. A lot of time lost there. Michaels also has to check up and head to the grass to avoid it. Guerra with a little bit of damage. Everyone will continue, but uh, damn, that's uh, it's not going to make it easy on those back four. Running two or even three wide through Mandela at the best of times is tricky, let alone on cold tires. Fred Flintstone goes off the circuit, as does Brian Fox in the number 74. Neither of them hit the wall. They'll both merge onto the racetrack without too much of a problem. Again, it's that time loss, though, and a loss of positions that is going to be most critical here. Andreas Allen squeezes it to the outside of Prudence Littlejohn and now outside of Lucas Knight three wide through the Capstad hairpin one of the tightest turns on the schedule Lucas Knight tries to come up in front of Allen he's still there Mitchell Carter sent around as well that was pretty unnecessary on both Knight and Allen to be that aggressive so early oh Allen swerves to miss Mitchell Carter and Guerra gets into the back of him, sending him into the spun William Brock. Carter was boxed in by Henry Williams, had nowhere to go. Lethanen gets a bit of a piece of that, nearly turns the 80 over, actually. Michael Harvey with some damage. William Brock goes for a quick spin, and then you see Allen and Guerra pile in. Lucas Knight has, just has to wait it out. Matt McIntyre racing for 14th gives DJ Curtis lots of room through Mandela, but maybe a little bit too much room. He just slid off the racetrack. No contact with the wall, however. But that, again, that's going to be a lot of lost time as he spins his tires in the gravel trying to get that car back going. Matt McIntyre loses around 10 spots on lap number two. Al Lagasse has had a fairly solid start to the race, currently running in 13th position. Chester Harvey and Kyle Collins going at it in front of them. DJ Curtis with an aggressive move into the corner, but the 0-1 drives it too hard through the middle of the corner. He gets up into the wall. Partial spin for the 0-1 car. He's back going, but he'll lose several positions, and he could very well have a tire rub now. The field stacks up as a result of the Al Lagasse spin, and that's about eight cars under a blanket. As a result, Anderson leading that hungry group of drivers. Ike Durbin just behind with Christian Hartono going after Freddie Munoz with Spencer Fullerton sitting in the wings. Jeffrey Fingai in the number 92 battling Sam Curtis for a top 15 spot as well. Spencer Fullerton over the curbs, airborne over the curbs, gets it loose, and he's off the road. In the Gao Tang Chicane. That is very uncharacteristic of the experienced Canadian driver. Joshua Michaels and granddad Fred Flintstone also join them in the gravel trap at the exit of turn number 14 there. Fullerton back onto the road. Fred Flintstone back onto the road. But I believe Michaels might have got into the wall, and that could really hurt the performance of the 04 car. Fullerton and Grandad were actively involved in battles, but Michaels went all on his own. There's a possibility that there could have been a little bit of fluids down on the track. We've had a few incidents the last few laps that could result in that, but Michaels is going to get stuck in the sand trap. He would need a tow back to the pits.
The front few drivers taking it fairly easy in the first few laps, but Sekuli beginning to challenge Tommy Turbo for that top spot. Takes a look to the inside through turn number six there. Estavis Cortez managed to get by Mifuni Sanjuro for that third spot. He appears to be a bit of a rocket ship. He's been posting some of the fastest laps of the race so far. Sikuli beginning to get a bit of a draft up on Tommy Turbo. Michaels coming out of the pits with that heavily damaged number 04 car. This isn't the best time for it as Turbo goes offline. He misses the apex by about a car length. And here comes Sikuli up the inside. Might use Michaels as a pick. Yes, he's got him. Up the inside, Turbo tries to get around Michaels, but Cortez and Sanjuro both by as Turbo still trying to get by the number 04 car. Michael stayed well out of the way, but some brilliant driving by the number two to try to take advantage of that. Turbo's off into the gravel trap. Turbo finally got to Michael's inside through Schwane. Michaels was going to let him go, but Turbo was pushing awfully hard, trying to catch those top three runs off the circuit and embeds himself firmly into the tire wall down there. Hamill's off the road, as is Markel in the 02, and Sam Curtis in the 66, engaged in some pretty hefty battles for position. The 02 with heavy damage as well, trying to spin himself back onto the racing surface. John King and Brian Fox have to swerve to avoid. Hamill back on the racing surface after his most recent spin. Grayson Acovito got by him, but Hamill trying to run around the outside of him there. John Bonnell seems convinced that Grayson Acovito is going to win out. Acovito hasn't been the best on these road courses as of recently. Hamill nearly runs off the road, and here comes Bonnell up the outside of the number 45, nearly into the wall there. Henry Williams right there as well. A good battle these guys are putting on for that spot, and it looks like Hamill is going to have to relinquish the spot back to Acovito. Eighth place, Tyler Thaber has gotten by the 04 of Joshua Michaels, but Chester Harvey has caught in the 04 in a really bad section of the racetrack. Mark Hankins trying to take advantage, but the Gauteng chicane is not a place where you can easily make a pass, and Michaels has nowhere to go. Harvey finally able to get to the inside, down the long start, finish straight, but they stack up behind him. They now race three wide for that position coming down the start, finish straight. Here comes Hankins and Demax on Harvey with Collins and, and Curtis nearly getting together. Just behind them, Hankins runs the 57 up the track in turn number one, and here comes Eugene Demax up the bottom in the number 90 car. He nearly won back at Olton Park, had it ruined by Jack Lagacy who has proven himself to be a fantastic road ringer back at Malaga. Some of the best road ringers on the schedule in this group under a blanket into the most difficult section of the course to max off the road, but Harvey gives him plenty of room to get back on. Fantastic racing between these six drivers. Sekuli in the Copart machine is now on the defensive. Estavis Cortez goes to the outside, can't make anything of it. A little bit too too wide of an arc there. If he can get some help from Sanjuro and gets a good run off of turn number six, he might just be able to challenge Joshua Sikuli down into the first of the high veld sweepers. Here he comes with a run. Can he get his nose in by the time we get to the corner? And can he outbreak the number two? Yes, he can. Sanjuro nearly runs into the back of him as they both have to check up a little bit to maintain the respective lines. Sikuli pushes too hard, runs into the grass, and he will be forced back into the third spot. Sanjuro tries to take advantage on the outside, but can't get the job done. Estavis Cortez, arguably one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, heads to the race lead. The Mexican driver leads here in Cape Town. Jeffrey Finguy taking a peek on Ike Durbin in the number 86 Vans machine. If he can get that spot, he will be up inside the top 15. 
Oh, God, he's blown up again. Jeffrey Finguy for the second round in a row will blow his engine, but this time it's catastrophic. He's left oil down on the track. Prudence Littlejohn, Sebastian Torres collected. Grayson Acevedo goes spiraling. Al Lagasse just narrowly gets by, but Henry Williams has heavy damage, as does Derek Hamill. And the 58 of Matt McIntyre, Sam Curtis, Joshua Michaels, John King, PJ Williams, they all pile in in one of the biggest crashes of the season. On board Derek Hamill through the smoke. Can't see anything on the approach to the accident. When he does go to apply the brakes, he's got nothing. Trying to desperately trying to engine brake those last couple of seconds into the crash, but takes some huge hits. Jeffrey Fingai, my god, he got annihilated six or seven times. As they all pile in to a devastating incident down in turn number seven. Jeffrey Fingai couldn't get out of the way. The speed differential was just too much. And man, once it was on, it was on. Jeffrey Fingai, probably six or seven tough licks. Hope he's all right in the number 92 car. Eventually, the oil would get dispersed and we'd be able to kind of continue without a red flag being necessary. But oh man, what a crash that was. That's the second incident of the race that Prudence Littlejohn had no hope in hell of avoiding. Littlejohn limping that car back to the pits. The good news is, unlike Bill Littlejohn, that car's not going to need a complete rebuild. This weekend has really taken a toll on that cash strap team. Fred Flintstone looks like he's going to gain some positions. Oh, well, guess not. Two spins and now a hefty collision will take Fred out of the race. Henry Williams was trying to pull that limped car back to the pits. Tried to get out of the way. Tried to merge to the outside line through turn 11, but it was too late. Fred was already there, and that's it for both of them. Torres, Acevedo, Williams, Hamill, McIntyre, Lethanen, Michaels, and King all also out of the race from the Jeffrey Fingai blow-up. Al Lagasse was the only driver to make it through the Fingai incident without getting any damage. But in a twist of fate, he would explode an engine coming between turns 1 and 2 just the following lap, falling out of the race and maintaining the Lagasse curse. Gustavus Cortez has begun to pull away from his fellow competitors. That's Sanjuro and Sekuli running side by side just behind. They'll be losing time if they keep that one up. Henrietta Fitzwater, in the meanwhile, still maintains fourth position, as she has pretty much all race long since Tommy Turbo went out on lap number five. After his wins at Waltham and Malaga, it's no surprise to see Jake Baskinger up inside the top five at yet another road course. Tyler Faber stuck behind the number 73 car as he was forced to the left side of the racetrack to get out of the way of Jake Baskinger. Hankins and Demax have gone on through as a result. Oh, get out of the way. Am I being recorded again? Yeah, you're being recorded again. Some frustration from Faber there as he gets into the side of the number 73, exiting turn number 11, heading towards the Gauteng chicane, and he's still not by him. Chester Harvey is looks like he's going to get by Harvey on the outside before Faber can do it on the inside. They once again split a lap car three wide down the start-finish straight, and Faber and Anderson look like they make a little bit of contact there into turn number one, hard battling for the sixth position now. Kyle Collins and Jack Lagasse sitting right there as well. Jack Lagasse, after nearly winning back in Malaga, now finally has a confirmed sponsorship come the North American Tour. Chester Harvey goes after Thaber through Chwane, now into Mandela. Thaber trying to hold the inside, gives him lots of room. Respectful racing there uh, from Thaber, despite the fact that I imagine he's still pretty frustrated with losing so much time due to Fullerton. 
Cortez's pace has slowed a little bit and Sanjuro is all over him now. Heading towards the high belt, Sweepers once again takes a peek to the inside. Cortez covers him off nicely. The six still might have his nose there for the second of them. Cortez drives it in hard and manages to keep the lead as a result. This race very reminiscent of Concord, a completely different style racetrack. The half mile triangle where these two battled to the nail for the victory in that one. It was Sanjuro who came out on top there. Who's going to come out on top here? The last time around, Sanjuro set his fastest lap of the race, but it was still two tenths slower than Cortez's lap. Cortez pulled away a little bit, and we're coming up on pit stops. That might be the deciding factor. Oh, Cortez is blown up! Cortez up in smoke in the number 62, and the fastest car of the day out of the race, a little over halfway through. Sanjuro threw into first, Sikuli back into second, though considerably behind Sanjuro, he had a lot of problems lapping William Brock. Anderson in from 11th at the end of lap number 15, very early strategy call by that team. We don't expect to see most of the teams in for at least another couple of laps or so. Maybe just what he needs to gain a few positions out there on the racetrack. Gustavus Cortez limps that car home. It appears all that speed that we saw came at a price of reliability. Henrietta Fitzwater also comes in early the following lap. Stuck behind William Brock right now. Not completely optimal for what the 61 was looking for, especially because she has to check up there for Brock to get into his pit box. We'll have to see where Fitzwater comes out as a result. Mufuni Sanjuro has been slicing and dicing his way through the lap traffic. Josh Sikuli, on the other hand, has been having a, a little bit more of an issue with it still alongside Michael Harvey in the number 72 car. Gauteng Chicane has been historically a very nasty section of the racetrack to make a pass on, and no surprise there. Sanjuro in while he's ahead, and Sikuli in to avoid having to deal with that lap traffic any longer. Most of the field actually will pit this lap. Sanjuro out well ahead of Sikuli. Couple of seconds it appears the gap is between the two. Sikuli's got a lot of work to do if he's gonna re-catch the number six machine in the net remaining 11 laps. It would be the off-cycle pit strategies that would win out the most. Daniel Voiles up to 6th place after hardly being inside the top 10 all day long. Max Anderson up to 5th now from 11th upon pitting. Sikuli has charged his way to the back bumper of Musfuni Sanjuro since the pit stops. He's reduced that insurmountable gap to just a car length or two. And Sanjuro has got to be feeling the pressure in the number six car. The Japanese driver uses the apron there in turn number five to try and stay in front. I think he realizes that if he can't defend the Copart machine behind him, that it may be all she wrote as far as the race victory. Sanjuro does have a win to his name. It came back at a completely different style of racetrack, that being Concord in North Carolina. Earlier on this year, Joshua Sikuli has little to no experience up at the front at all. His only really significant performance in his career came last year in the Hark Can-Am series, where he came in the top five and battled for the win the last few laps at Montreal. But he is putting on a masterclass here today. Still inside the number six. He tried the outside. That was sure wasn't going to work. We've seen that tried a few times, but that's put Sanjuro offline through turn number 10, and we could see a switchback towards turn 11. Here comes Sikuli. He's up to the door. Now maybe the fender of the number six entering turn number 11. If he can't get the job done, things could get interesting entering the Gauteng chicane. The six gets loose, exiting the corner, tries to pin him down to the inside. Sanjuro throws it into the corner, gets loose, and now he's spun the car off the hood of the number two of Joshua Sikuli. Sanjuro stuck in the gravel trap, 
back there has gotten himself out. Eugene DeMax has spun off the course as well as Sakuli now has a significant lead over the rest of the field. He just needs to limp that car home. Might have a little bit of flat spotting on his tires. He got hard onto the brakes there. On board Sakuli here. Sanjuro really did pin him down into the chicane and sent it in. Got into the curbs that we saw drivers struggle with earlier on and cut across the nose of the number two. She was, sorry, he was all out of shape coming through that corner and paid the price for it. Sakuli might have a little bit of fender damage and that could cause a tire rub. Sakuli's just got to limp that thing home. He's got a huge lead of around eight seconds now with both Sanjuro and third place Demax off into the gravel trap. Unlike Golden Park, Demax is not going to be able to pin the blame on anyone else but himself. He was under no pressure from behind. Henrietta Fitzwater was over a second back and battling with a lap car through the chicane. He might have got a little bit excited with the smoke in front of him. Saw prospects of a race victory in his sights, but uh, it's a real shame for Demax. Second time he's been tossed out of a podium. Sanjuro may have merged back onto the racetrack in second, but that appears to have taken a toll on the tires of the number six car. Fitzwater has been challenging him the last few corners, and Sanjuro doesn't have seem to have a lot to defend with as Sanjuro struggles to keep any positions that he can. Fitzwater is easily through. Boyles and Anderson could be soon as well. Max Anderson and Jake Basking are racing hard to try and get by Mifuni Sanjuro down into turn number one. They were three wide across the stripe there. And Sanjuro was actually slower than the lap car of Sam Curtis through the Gauteng chicane. Max Anderson taking a peek to the outside. Curtis moves down, but Baskinger's there. They make contact, get locked together. Curtis goes for a spin. Luckily, no one is there as Curtis spins back across the racetrack. Curtis was just trying to be a gracious back marker there, but uh, a bad day gets even worse for the driver of the number 66 machine. The last time around, both Henrietta Fitzwater and Daniel Voiles were over a second faster than Josh Sikuli. If they can keep up this pace, they may just catch him. Daniel Voiles really throwing that car about, trying to get into second place. This isn't optimal as far as catching the leader, but damn is it putting on a show for the South African fans. Voiles still up there on the outside through the Gauteng chicane. This is actually the optimal line through the corner and the 52 slips into second place. What a run by Daniel Voiles to make that one stick. Fourth through 11th is anyone's guess here with four laps to go. They're all within a couple of seconds. Tyler Faber with a very late move into turn number one on Max Anderson. Anderson ends up giving him room and they're side by side heading towards Schwane. Chester Harvey takes a look on the number 10 as well entering the corner. Ike Durbin and DJ Curtis round out this group and look like they're just taking it easy for now. Oh, Ike Durbin got into the back of Baskinger. Gets loose and spins it off the racetrack. He will back that car into the tire wall. He'll be able to keep going. He's got some damage, but there's no point in pitting now, and he'll likely stay out. So he'll have a chance at a top 15, but he will not improve on his best effort of the season, a 10th place finish as things stand right now. Sikuli has been off his former pace since the contact with Mifuni Sanjuro. For a bit there, it looked like Voiles and Fitzwater were actually going to catch Sikuli as they were over a second faster for a couple of laps. But since then, the gap has remained fairly constant with Voiles and Fitzwater consistently battling for that second spot and Sikuli regaining composure and beginning to drive away. Voiles gets into the back of PJ Williams there as Williams doesn't do a great job of getting out of the way of the leaders there. Williams is the last driver on the racetrack and Voiles was having none of it there as he threw the 26 down into the inside wall. Williams currently occupies that 26th position and now that group of eight has to deal with getting by the 26 machine. Voiles runs it off into the gravel trap. He has been giving it his all. Gave it a little bit too much there and Fitzwater back into second as a result. 
Joshua Sikuli successfully negotiated the last of the lap traffic he's likely to experience and just got the white flag the last time around. Fitzwater and Boyles continue to be slightly faster than Sikuli despite the battling they've been having the last couple of laps but it's just not going to be enough. They don't have enough time. Fitzwater runs off the road this time and Voiles with a great sweeping move to the inside to get that second spot. Fitzwater's going to try and get something going on the outside through turn number six. Can't quite do it for now. Just a few corners to go, but the battle is still on for fourth place. That's Mark Hankins up the outside of the number 73, trying to get by the lap car fairly smoothly. Can't get the job done there. Though Fullerton gave him room, now he heads to the left side of the track, but Faber's pinned in by the 43, and it's deja vu for Faber. He may lose a top five just yet if Anderson can make this move sick. Through the Gauteng chicane, Fullerton and Anderson side by side through the chicane. He loses the spot to Faber and loses yet another to Chester Harvey. Faber is going to keep the top five. Meanwhile, it's Joshua Sikuli in the number two Copart Chrysler, who's driven a masterful race today. Started in third place. Stayed out of trouble, but stayed in contention for the win early on. Even through a bad pit stop, he never gave up. He drove the wheels off that car to catch Mifuni Sanjuro, forced him into a mistake, and as a result, he's going to claim his very first Hark win here at Cape Town International Circuit. Well-deserved run for Daniel Voiles, who with the help of his pit strategy and pit crew, and some really balls to the walls driving those last few laps, will get second place. Henrietta Fitzwater was consistent all day long, third place for her. Mark Hankins really threw in a defensive effort those last few laps to hold off a hungry group of drivers behind him, and as a result, I think he'll get a career best fourth place. Tyler Faber in the number 900 just narrowly held off Max Anderson and Chester Harvey for a top five. Sixth place goes to Chester Harvey in the number 57. The number 43 of Max Anderson finishes seventh. He came across the line three wide with Jake Baskinger, who finished eighth, and Mifuni Sanjuro, who fell to ninth place after his lap 20 spin. DJ Curtis rounds out the top 10 with Brian Fox running 16th, taking the hard charger bonus after recovering from an early spin. Oh, hey, good finish for once. Hey, Jordan, could you go check if uh, I'm being recorded again? I mean, that's, that's been a recurring thing as of recent. Faber clearly happy about his run, but I think he turned off his radio just in time to swerve in front of Spencer Fullerton there. Clearly a little bit of anger from the New Jersey 8 over how he was raced by Fullerton wasn't necessarily Fullerton's fault. He was trying to stay out of the way as best as he could, and Faber just ended up at the wrong place at the wrong time and got taken advantage of nearly twice. But... Uh, Nonetheless, they were a little bit upset with the Canadian driver. With round 11 complete, the 2017 Hark season is officially halfway over. Demir Bejenov, the consistent Kazakh and past champion, leads the points despite not having a win as a result of brute consistency and minimizing bad days. Even when he qualifies poorly, he charges through the pack and he always stays out of trouble. DJ Curtis, just three points behind, started off the year with two wins and had a few poor showings in the following races, but has really amped up his consistency lately to get himself back in the heat of the points race. The best of the rest is Skyla Johnson, 40 points back, who has a win to her name at Pocono and has put down solid performances all year despite the mechanical problems her teammate at Fingai Saitomi has experienced. The top rookie drivers are Caitlin Sang and Matthew Engelram, who have both shown that they can be competitive for wins at multiple different venues. The top 10 drivers are all within a one race striking distance of the points lead, with a maximum closure rate of 118 points under the current point system. In the last lengthy Hark season, the 20 round 2015 campaign, the eventual champion was 35th out of 68 full-time drivers with less than a third of the season remaining. Most of you still have a shot. We'll see you at the clockwise Calder Park Oval for round 12. 
But before that, we'll see you at Sandown Raceway for the Backmarkers race, where the bottom 42 teams in points will do battle for a hefty cash prize.